One of the deepest divides in the Democrat Party, at least among the base right now, is should the Democrats replace Joe Biden as their candidate? Some are saying we're riding with Biden, riding and dying quite potentially come election day, but that's neither here nor there. Some of them are saying it's time to um, carry us with Harris. I, I don't know. I, I can't think of something that rhymes with Harris. Tell me down in the comments. Anyway, that's, you know, it's got sidetracked. But the point being, there's a lot of different discussion about that. Even those on the Republican side are... Some are worrying they're going to replace Biden because he is seemingly their weakest candidate. So today we're going to be talking about if uh, they will indeed replace Biden, the Democrat apparatus, whether that be the convention or the, um, you know, just the kind of DNC. Maybe they'll just go circumvent the delegates or, you know, um, convince the delegates, should I say. And so we're going to talk about that. Will that happen? And then we're going to rate the potential pl replacements that have been floated in Biden's stead. Let's get into it. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fighting Revive with Adam Boyer. Okay, will Biden be dropping out voluntarily is the first question. Let's answer that with this article from Reuters. President Joe Biden vowed to push on with his re-election bid on Monday, that being today, dismissing the concerns of some fellow Democrats on Capitol Hill and donors that his persistence could cost their party the White House and Congress in the, in the November 5th U.S. election. Biden, 81, said any candidates who doubt his ability should challenge him at the Democratic National Convention in August, an effort that stands no chance of success unless he lets the delegates he won in primaries this year consider other candidates. The bottom line here is that I'm not going anywhere, Biden said in a phone call he placed to MSNBC's Morning Joe program. He repeated that message to donors on a private call later in the day, according to two sources on the call. Several congressional candidates have called for Biden to drop out, and the article goes on. And he has been receiving pressure from donors, congressional candidates, members of his own party to drop out. Uh, some of the biggest uh, players in the Democrat politics right now who we'll talk about Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer, uh, Bill Clinton, I guess, can be included, uh, uh, Barack Obama, they've all said, uh, Hillary Clinton, they've all said that they're going to support Biden and he is not dropping out. We're supporting Biden as our nominee. We're going to see if that's all just political speak or if they actually mean what they say. I wouldn't bet on it. So let's rate these different candidates. Let's go through some of the uh, main candidates who have been floated as potential replacements for Biden and see what we think. Um, as for me, I will just say before we get started, I mean, obviously I'm making this video, so I think there's a decent chance. I legitimately do not know. That's my analysis. I think there's maybe, there's a 50-50 chance. I don't know. It's obvious that most of the Democrat powers that be want Biden um, out. I don't know about Obama. He's a tricky guy, and he if he's been the one that's been running the country this whole time, as many have theorized, then he seemingly would not want Biden to drop out. But the Democrats, while they don't let winning get in the way of their agenda, they're okay with having short-term losses if it means furthering their agenda in the long term, which Republicans do not do, which I actually think the Democrats do well. The Republicans do not. Um, but if they think at the same time Biden cannot win in November, they may very well go ahead and replace him. So I think there's legitimately a 50-50 chance. I don't know. Can Jill and Hunter and and Joe, I guess, you can throw them in there too, can they hold on to the White House pillars beside the front door, kicking and screaming while everyone else tries to drag them out? Let's find out. So I think there's a 50-50 chance, but if he does get replaced at the National Convention or if he steps down, Harris takes the spot, and we have chaos at the convention. Let's just see what happens. Let's start off with Kamala Harris, the reigning vice president. Uh, here's the deal. Harris, I think, is even less electable than Biden, and that is uh, saying something. Biden is the least electable incumbent president since at least Jimmy Carter, maybe even back further than him. Um, and when you look at the polls, yes, I know I'm going back to the polls that we, you know, Republicans love to talk about. I hate to, you know, sound like your average commentator, your average usually establishment commentator, you know, just always, well, the polls say, so this must be true. But the best indicator we have right now are the polls, so let's go to them. Um, Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump in the Hill and DDHQ's polling average has a Trump has a 2.7% lead based on 52 polls. So the thing is, we're going to go through some individual states for her in a moment. Harris doesn't perform any better than Biden in the polling, really. Um, I guess 
again, you can say wait and see. I think she's gonna she perform worse than Biden. There's an argument to be made that she would perform better, but in the polling, that's just not showing it. DDHQ, two point seven percent lead for Trump. Um, the polls that have come out after the debate, um, we that was on June twenty seventh, I believe. We have McLaughlin and Associates did two polls, one showing Trump up seven, one one Trump up five. But that's a bit of a biased poll, more than likely. Data for Progress, a left-leaning poll, 1,011 likely voters the day after the debate, plus three for Trump. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, June 28th through 29th, this one from SSRS and CNN, plus two for Trump. Um, 1,500 registered voters June 28th through 30th from Harris X and Forbes, plus six for Trump. Uh, YouGov and Yahoo News, plus two. Ipsos and Reuters, plus one for Trump. And... July 1st through 2nd, the only one we have completely in July. Also, Ipsos and Reuters, 892 registered voters. Again, Trump up 143-42. So, again, there's an argument we made Harris would do better than Biden. I don't think so. <clears throat> I mean, imagine all the ads that could be run strictly on the... <laughs> the, the, the horrid, you know, soul-tearing uh, soul laugh. It just kind of makes it send shivers down your spine. She starts talking about a Venn diagram and a yellow school bus, and you're just like, nope, I'm gone. I'm, I'm voting for you know, Jill Stein. I don't know. You're not voting for Kamala Harris is the point. Um, there's a lot of – she's unpopular. She's not looked at really as a serious person because she's not, and I don't think that she's going to be the one to replace Biden, and if she did, I don't think it would go well. Um, RCP – their polling average, DD, uh, DDHQ in the Hill, had 2.7 for Trump in the average. Um, RCP has Trump up 2 on the, on average, uh, pretty much using the, some of the same polls. Uh, and now, some of the individual states, we're going to look at the four individual states, how the two poll versus each other, Trump and Harris, and look at the four most competitive, which are, in my mind, Nevada, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. Um, these are old polls, to be fair. Um, we don't have any individual new individual state polls, but the polls we have from Nevada show um, New York Times and Siena, The Hill and Emerson are the two polls. The first one shows Trump up eight against Harris. The other one, Trump up nine. In Wisconsin, we have one poll, New York Times, Siena College, Trump up two over Harris. Pennsylvania, we have, again, The Hill and Emerson and New York Times and Siena, plus four for Trump in New York Times, Siena, The Hill and Emerson, Trump up nine in Pennsylvania. And then in Michigan, the only one I saw out of those four, New York Times, Siena, again, that same poll um, shows Harris up two in liberal-leaning Michigan, not a liberal state, but liberal-leaning Michigan. Out of those four mentioned, Michigan has the argument for being the most liberal, at least this year. So Harris, the point being, I really don't think she's a strong candidate. Yes, she's the sitting vice president, but no one likes her, to be completely honest. And again, there's there's an argument made for all these candidates that they could win based on the fact that Democrats would vote for, you know, a stinky wet sock over <laughs> over Trump. Most of them would. 85, 90% of Democrats would probably do that. They would vote for, you know, they'll ride in Donald Duck over Donald Trump. Um, I just realized that, that name similarity there. Hmm. Is there a deeper meaning to that? I don't know. So... <laughs> Kamala Harris, I don't think is going to be the Democrat nominee. I think it would be a disaster for them. And we're going to rate all these different candidates on a scale of 1 to 10 at the end. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for interrupting your viewing experience. However, I just want to remind you real quick to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel. Help us reach more people with our conservative message. Michelle Obama. Let's read. I have articles pulled up for each of these candidates. How about Michelle Obama? Some have affectionately nicknamed her Big Mike. I would never say that because that's rude. And, uh, you know, it, it hints at somewhat of a, you know, a vulgar joke, but I, I would never call her Big Mike. But uh, as some would say, Big Mike, uh, this episode from bi uh, this uh, article, excuse me, from Business Insider, what Michelle, a running list of what Michelle Obama has said about not running for president. With Joe Biden's reelection campaign in shambles, Democrats are turning yet again to a woman they long wanted to nominate, Michelle Obama. But the former first lady has been telling them no more... No, for more than a decade, and doesn't seem likely to change her mind anytime soon. Some pollsters have thrown Obama's name around during the de frantic Democratic attempt to find someone to run in Biden instead should he drop out of the race. 
A post-debate Reuters poll found that Obama is the only potential Democrat candidate with a noticeable lead over Trump at 50% compared to his 39%. That poll did include several others, including Newsom and I believe Gretchen Whitmer, maybe Harris as well. But yes, in that poll, 50 to 39, 11-point lead from Michelle or Big Mike. I'm not saying that. Some people would say that, though. Uh, Obama, however, deliberately situates herself outside of partisan politics, focusing instead on service. She has remained relatively quiet during the 2024 election cycle for that reason, though some speculate her disengagement is also related to familial gripes with the Bidens. When asked about the persistent rumors about her candidacy, Crystal Carson, Obama's communications director, reiterated to Business Insider what she said in March of this year. <clears throat> As former First Lady Michelle Obama has expressed several times over the years, she will not be running for president. Mrs. Obama supports President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris's re-election campaign. What do you think? I Again, I don't know what to think. It's so hard to tell because oftentimes you can read Republican politicians. You can read politicians as a whole and you can kind of tell when they're being semi-serious um, and semi-sincere, even if you know they'll, they'll turn around and go back on their word. Sometimes you can tell when they're sort of sincere at the time and then when they're actually just flat out lying it's hard to tell in this scenario i wouldn't rule michelle out or big mike again not my nickname um but i wouldn't rule her out and <laughs> her i'll call her her um yeah, i wouldn't rule her out um i think she'd be a decent candidate i don't know that she's the best the democrats can put up um because the thing is I don't know that she's as popular as some remember her being. She's popular as a former first lady and as a first lady. As a candidate, I don't know. Would she be considered that serious of a candidate? Again, she's kind of been outside of politics um, largely. So she's not looked at as an ultra-political figure. It's not like she has political experience. Again, she has the name recognition. She has maybe the favorability. Uh, but I think she would get hurt in a lot of... Um, in a lot of different areas, not the least of which being she's a woman president, which we've never had in this country for a reason. And I think a lot of women, actually, which you think every woman in the country is going to vote for Michelle Obama, I think a lot of them wouldn't, actually. I think there's sort of a weird, I don't know if I'd call it an inferiority complex, and this one's going to get me in trouble probably, but I don't think a lot of women in the country would vote for Michelle Obama. No doubt there would be a lot of them, probably majority of women. A majority of women usually vote for the Democrat. But I'm not sure how much of a majority would vote for Obama. So I don't know. We're going to rate him at the end. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting question. Now, Greasy Gavin, the one who's been floated perhaps the most as the potential Biden replacement. He was at the debate on uh, Thursday night, which I guess was two Thursdays ago at this point. He was, you know, uh, drumming up support for Biden, talking about what an awesome guy Biden is. And I am full. I'm completely behind uh, President Biden. He was stumping for Biden on Pennsylvania. Wait, Gavin Newsom was stumping? Hmm, interesting. Yes, he was stumping for Biden in Pennsylvania. Um, here's this article <clears throat> Article from Fox News. Newsom stumps for Biden in Pennsylvania, deflects on if open convention would tempt him. Legit question, he says. <laughs> Scary music as the villain enters the scene. While campaigning for President Biden in the battleground state of Pennsylvania over the weekend, he was asked about his own prospects should the Democrat incumbent exit the race. A longtime top Biden campaign surrogate, Newsom has rallied behind the president's re-election bid, making stops in Michigan and Pennsylvania. At an event in Doylestown, Newsom said a second term for former President Trump would equate to America in reverse and touted the Biden-Harris administration's record on the economy. On the heels of a disastrous debate performance for Biden, one reporter asked the California governor afterward, if it comes to an open convention, will you run? No, I, I, I mean, I mean, it's not even... Uh, Newsom began, interjecting the reporter pressed, absolutely not. Th that's, that's not to me. It's to me. It's the hypothetical that gets in the way of progress in terms of promoting this candidacy, Newsom said. I hope that wasn't too distracting. It's my best Newsom impression I have on the spur of the moment. I, I would have to think about that one, prepare a little bit more, I'll... You know, I have to work on that news and impression, but there you go. That's a legit question, but it's exactly where the other party wants us to be, is having this internal fight, Newsom added. I think it's extraordinarily unhelpful. Said that literally the second after the debate. It was my first public comments. So I've been consistent in this belief, not just privately, but publicly. You'll notice he never actually uh, really firmly rejected that. He just kind of said, no, nah, it's not you. I wouldn't, of course not, maybe. Um, so kind of wishy-washy there. The fact is... 
he probably would be the first alternative for the Democrats. Um, Newsom would be, I think, so he's not going to deny it now because it's too easy to have him on camera or in print saying he wouldn't run. So he wants to be, you know, play around the edges there. Again, I'm all in for Biden. I'm campaigning for Biden. Biden Harris for the win, 2024, riding with Biden. I'm not convinced. He said, you know, he said he's not going to run and he wouldn't try to even replace Biden if Biden dropped out. I'm not convinced at all. I think Newsom would be a very interesting candidate and maybe a very good one for the Dems. He's a very good politician. He's got a horrible record, but he's a very good politician. He's a snake oil salesman or a hair oil salesman, potentially, depending on how you want to put that. But I think he's a very serious option for the Dems and one of their best alternatives. Not saying he's a good alternative necessarily, but he is um, their best, one of their best. And again, we're going to rate all these at the end. How about one that's been thrown in the mix recently? RFK Jr. How about this? RFK Jr. Could he replace the Democrat, uh, Joe Biden as the Democrat nominee? Remember, he started off his campaign running for the Democrat nomination, and then he dropped out to run as an independent. And he's reasonably popular. You know, there's a lot of people that think, oh, you know, he's a Kennedy, decent guy. Um, I've become, I will say, a little bit more intrigued with him recently. I put out a video a few months back, kind of breaking down his policy positions and how he's a bit more of a liberal. He's not an ultra liberal. So, I mean, I guess you could say he's one of the few moderates. Um, the problem is he is extreme on a lot of positions, just not on all of them. He's a moderate in today's Democrat Party, but he's not a moderate in terms of like, yeah, like, you know, on half the issues he's kind of conservative, on half the issues he's kind of Democrat. He is a Democrat. He's just not quite as radical as some. <clears throat> but I will say I've been I've been more intrigued with him recently, and I don't mind you know covering uh, different you know stories about him nationally in DDHQ and the Hill uh, as of July eighth, which is today. He is currently sitting at seven point nine percent. Trump at forty one seven. Biden thirty eight nine. Um, seven point nine percent. So basically eight percent is not a bad showing for an independent candidate. Granted, I would expect that number if he's only polling at eight percent. By election day, if that doesn't go up, I would expect it to be more like three or four percent on election day. Maybe enough to tip some swing states, but um, you know, not enough to do, uh, you know, be a super serious candidate. But it's obvious he could draw a lot of more voters toward the Democrat if he were to be the Democrat nominee. Uh, at one point, he was polling as high as nineteen percent way back when in October. But again, his his po his kind of popularity, that initial spark, that kind of initial flash in the pan, has faded. So the problem with, with RFK Jr., he is, I think, legitimately too moderate for the Democrat Party. I don't think they would nominate him. But the bigger problem for them is that he's uncontrollable and he won't be told what to do. He do, He's not, again, he's a liberal, but he's not a member of the establishment. He is legitimately sort of an outsider, I think. And so you can disagree with that. But the fact is he can't be controlled and he will not be told what to do, certainly not by Barack Obama or, you know, whoever else is running the DNC, the, the bureaucracy um, in Washington, they're not able to tell him what to do. And for that reason, I don't think they're going to nominate him. He would probably be the most electable candidate the Dems could put up. I don't think they're going to do it. Okay, we've got two more. How about, how about a little plot twist here? Roy Cooper. Now, if you're like, who the heck is Roy Cooper? He is the outgoing Democrat governor, elected in 2016. He, uh, he first got elected in 2016 to be North Carolina's governor. He climbed the political ladder in North Carolina, starting, I believe, in the early 2000s, maybe late 90s. And um, he's been a very popular governor of North Carolina. The main problem for me with Roy Cooper, he would be a decent candidate in terms of policy and favorability, I think, for the Dems. The problem is he's simply unknown. I've had some disagreement on this. Um... But I don't think anyone really knows who Roy Cooper is. And they're like, well, you know, you're you're ultra political, so you just don't know that. Or you know who, uh, you know, Newsom is or Gretchen Whitmer is or, um, you know, some of these other candidates are. You just know who they are because you're ultra political. I think a lot more people know about Gavin Newsom and Gretchen Whitmer from COVID, if nothing else. Bad press. You know, they say all press is good press. But um, I think a lot more people know who he, they are than Roy Cooper is. If you walk into... A room of 100, 100 randomly selected people, let's say, yeah, 100 selected people picked at random from across America, probably two people are going to 
probably one person to be able to tell you who Roy Cooper is, and that would be one of the two North Carolinians in the room, I imagine. Um, maybe both North Carolinians, but I don't think many people know who Roy Cooper is. Now, the Democrat Party, they can pump them up. They've got millions and millions and millions of dollars they can spend, and they've got the media working on their side. They can get that recognition up real quick, but it's going to be hard to do. It's legitimately going to be hard to do to take someone who's virtually unknown and boost them. Um, it's You're also talking old white guy, likable, but an old white guy, um, replacing you know, the young, uh, or younger, I should say, f- female black vice president, which could cause... Um, you know, some disruption with a few voters and a few donors, but I think for the most part, it's just going to be, um, I, I, I think the, the Dems vote for the Democrat. I don't know that that really matters. I looked this up. I looked Roy Cooper for president. I could find one article that was relevant from the local ABC affiliate in North Carolina. Governor Cooper floated as potential Biden replacement. With Governor Roy Cooper's eight years in office coming to a close next year, there's been a lot of talk about his political future. He's been touted as a potential Democrat candidate in 2028, but given the recent talk post-debate about whether President Biden should stay on the ticket, those conversations are happening a lot sooner. Governor Cooper's stunt for President Biden, making it clear North Carolina is in play, as national Democrats see North Carolina as their biggest pickup opportunity. But even some North Carolina Dems admitted that Biden's debate performance could have been better. Um... At the national level, amid questions of Biden's age and ability, some wonder if he should be replaced. While it is possible at the party's convention, it's a rare and risky move. In recent years, we haven't really seen it happen with... We really haven't seen it happen. Both of the parties have tended to lock in their candidates fairly early on. Axios reports one senior House Democrat floated five governors as a potential candidate. Uh, Cooper was among them. Experts say Cooper checks a lot of boxes. He's the governor of a key swing state with high approval ratings and a Democrat who can win tough races in a southern state, including both times in 2016 and 2020 when he ran his races for governor, even when Trump won North Carolina on the same ballot. But unless things change for now, Cooper and others making it clear that they're sticking with Biden to be the one to try and make that happen, and it goes on from there. I'll be honest, he'd be a good candidate in terms of policy and maybe even his favorables, Again, I think the main problem is no one knows who Roy Cooper is. But, um, yeah, I mean, he wouldn't be the worst candidate they could pick. Okay, let's get to our last one, and this is the... I've called, uh, I believe it was Amy Klobuchar, the Wicked Witch of the Midwest. I think, more appropriately, that title probably goes to Gretchen Whitmer. Uh, I think she her face fits the title more, uh, completely brutally honestly. And um, I think her policy and her uh, <clears throat> radicality, I'm going to invent that word... I don't think that's a word anyway. Um, I think uh, that fit the name fits her more. So this latest article from AP, article from AP, Governor Whitmer shuts down 2024 presidential talk but doesn't hide her ambitions in timely book launch. Okay, that's it. She's running for president. She launched a book. You know she's doing something this year. You don't launch a book that literally no one reads unless you're running for president or some office. You only release a book if you're a politician, if you're running for office, and usually president, because no one reads it. You'll sell ten to 20,000 copies in the first week. It will disappear after that. No one will ever hear from it or, or um, from or about the book again. You get your headlines out of it. You get your press. You get your round of interviews. That's the only reason you release a book. Uh, with all that said, I guess I'll read the article anyway. Uh, Whitmer did what she could to shut down such speculation in a pre-launch interview with the Associated Press. When asked if she would consider becoming a candidate this year if Biden were to step down, she responded with a definitive no. It's a distraction more than anything, said Whitmer. I don't like seeing my name in articles like that because I'm totally focused on governing and campaigning for the ticket. The more I read this article, the more I'm 100% convinced she is absolutely running for this thing, and she's the one gunning for it, trying to get the nomination at the convention. Uh, then it goes on to talk about her book and her background. I literally could not care less. So there you go. Gretchen Whitmer, uh, I don't think she'd be the greatest candidate for a couple reasons. Number one, I'm just, I'm not saying I would not vote for a candidate because of this, but number one, she's a woman. And again, there's a reason America's never voted for a woman president and it does simply hurt them. See Hillary Clinton. There's a lot of material to attack on Gretchen Whitmer, including, uh, that she was the face of COVID lockdowns. You know, you couldn't go into the gardening section. Was it in Lowe's? Back in 2020 in Michigan? I don't remember. That was some crazy stuff. She was a tyrant, a legit tyrant um, in Michigan in 2020, as was uh, Virginia's governor at the time, Ralph Northam, Governor Blackface. Look that up if you don't know about it. 
Uh, and the fact remains, Whitmer is just generally unlikable. She is not a um, super likable candidate. That doesn't play into a whole lot, um, but just gut reaction. Uh, she's not, like, I wouldn't put a whole lot of stock um, into, her, into her favorables. Again, you can get those up with, with the right amount of press, but I don't think she'd be the greatest candidate just right off the bat. Okay, look, I promise I'm done interrupting the video after this, okay? I just wanted to let you know real quick, YouTube's algorithm helps promote channels uh, based in part on if viewer engagement is higher. So if, for example, you were to go and watch another episode after this one, that would be great because it would help boost my channel in the YouTube algorithm. I would very much appreciate it. Thank you. So as we wrap this up, and I'm sure this has been a longer episode by now, so we're going to wrap it up. Rating on a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being not at all electable, 10 being very electable, who should the Democrats use to replace Biden? And for, um, if he is replaced, and uh, for reference, I have Biden as a 4 on this scale, so uh, pretty unelectable, basically. The only candidate I have rated worse than Biden, uh, as I hinted at earlier, is Harris. Biden's a 4, I have Harris as a 3. Um, I, I think, I'm not going to go over what I said already, I simply don't think she's a very electable candidate, and I don't think anyone likes Kamala Harris, and I don't think that's going to change. She gets a three. Going up from there, I give Roy Cooper a number five. Uh, five. Um, again, I think on surface, if he had made more news, basically, if he was a nationally known figure like a Ron DeSantis, who a lot of people in America know who he, who he is, Florida's governor, or um, Kathy Hochul even in New York, again, maybe you could say Newsom, um, but if he was a more well-known candidate, Cooper would be very good. Just no one knows who he is. Again, you can disagree that that even matters. That's my rating. At a five and a half, I have Gretchen Whitmer. Just talked about her. Slightly more than Cooper, strictly pretty much on basis of name recognition. Uh, Michelle Obama, I have as, as a six and a half. She'd be better. Again, you have the problem of her being a woman working against her, but she's got the Obama name and she's somewhat liked, I think, um, Again, that could change the further she gets into, like, partisan politics, as the article put it. But I think she's reasonably well-liked, and um, I think she could be a decent candidate. So somewhat electable, six and a half. Pretty electable. I have Gavin Newsom at a seven. Um, again, great politician. Bad record. A radical. That's going to hurt him. All Democrats are at this point. I know, but there's a lot of material to use against Biden in attack ads, basically excuse me, against Newsom, and so I think he gets a 7. Pretty decent candidate. Lastly, at a 9, very electable, I have Robert F. Kennedy Jr., and he is very electable, and I think the Democrats, if they nominate him, might actually beat Trump, but the fact is they're not going to because he can't be controlled. He's not radical enough for them, and that's the way the Democrat Party is these days. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack. I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.